What's up, everybody? How y'all doing? We are starting something new today. It was not my intention to play this game. I got a YouTube ad or something, and I saw it, and uh, the art style initially clicked. It just, just immediately clicked with me. I'm like, holy shit, this is a Spike Chunsoft uh, game in the vein of um, Danganronpa. And I fucking love Danganronpa. So this is Master Detective Archives Rain Code. Uh, right now, what I have loaded up, this is the prequel, the prologue, the how to be a master detective, a Yakko Furio case. So I don't know like, exactly how to classify this. I think this video is just called Prologue. Um, yeah, I, I don't know a lot about this game. Uh, I, as far as I can tell, it's, an, it, it's not a 2D visual novel. It's more of a more of a an adventure detective story, as I think is what it was classified as. Um, I think this prequel was described more as a visual novel, but that's beside the point. So our main character is apparently a junior detective who is being haunted by the spirit of a Shinigami to solve murder cases or something like that. That's, that's as far as I understand it. And that, that sounds a lot like Murdered Soul Suspect, if anybody remembers that game. But uh, either way, I've yacked enough. Uh, I just want to make sure. Let's see. Oh, language is in English. Oh, that's probably in, that's probably like written language. It's probably not voice acted. Yako Furyu, lazy and irresponsible at first glance, the Kanai Ward native is a detective and the head of the only agency in the city, the Nocturnal Detective Agency. Even if you forget how to be angry, even if you forget how to be sad, even if you forget the blue of the sky, even if you forget the shimmer of the stars. Holy shit, it's a wall of text. <laughs> All right, <clears throat> let's... Uh... Buckle in. All right. I only realized the loftiness of my expectations for how rewarding and exciting part-time work at a bar could be after those expectations weren't met. And I, I hope I'm not, like, screaming at you guys. My cat was up on my desk, and I, I'm hoping he didn't mess with my audio. Um, let's see here. Uh, in other words, working at a bar was neither rewarding nor exciting. Learning to mix drinks and dealing with drunks were complete hassles, and there wasn't even the shoulder of a cute co-worker to cry on. It was pretty much just me, the only part-timer, alone with the 40-something-year-old bearded owner. Sometimes, I'd be left to fend for myself until the next day rolled around. There was plenty of reasons to leave, including the fact that it was a job anybody could do. Not to mention, it was just too physically demanding. Unfortunately, I couldn't actually quit. Everyone around me was buckling down for college exams or making the most of their last summer of freedom. But I couldn't be bothered. If I quit my job, I'd have nothing to do. The clock was ticking, though. Living up the wages of a part-time bartender was rough. And if I couldn't find, if I couldn't figure out what I wanted to do, I'd end up in a Kanai War factory. A Kanai Ward factory. There we go. Let me enunciate a little bit more. Probably some place like Am uh, Amaterasu uh, Corp, which had been making waves. Clock in for exactly eight hours every day. Come evening, some boring book in one hand, a beer in the other. Repeat ad nauseum for 40, 50 years. Terrifying. Terrifying how perfectly clear that image is in my head. There was just nothing I wanted to be. Or rather, it's more like I don't think I can be what I want to be. And so... To not have to deal with those sorts of unproductive thoughts. I mix drinks at a bar. Ice, whiskey, cola. Ice, whiskey, soda. Ice, whiskey, whiskey. The first two drinks should be stiff. The more booze flows, the less fussy customers tend to be. But get them too drunk, and you'll only find out. You're, uh, and you'll only find yourself in more trouble. So hitting that sweet spot is the key. The trick is to watch the eyelids. Even if someone looks sober, once their eyelids start to droop. It means they're one or two drinks away from a meltdown or throwing stuff around. But someone who looks dead drunk can stand firm on his own two feet all night as long as his eyelids don't give. The most annoying customers are the ones who only order beer uh, or drinks on the rocks. Simple orders, sure, but I can't adjust the strength of their drinks. All I can do is offer a chaser and hope the person is dealing with uh, the person I'm dealing with doesn't suck. 
a waste of my skills, dreams, and youth that would otherwise go completely unused, all so I can snag a couple extra sales. Beardy left me alone today. Since all the customers had already left, I closed the till a little earlier than usual. Not bad, earnings-wise. It is a Friday, after all. As I, con as I count up the sales, I think about my crap hourly wage. I'm sure I put the close sign on the door, but it suddenly bursts open all the same. Sorry, but we're already... Hand over the money. What? Two skinny guys in balaclavas, both holding black batons. Oh, uh, one of the balaclavas walks right up to me and crack. A sound like one billiard ball smashing into another. There's an iron tang in the back of my nose, and I find myself facing the ceiling. Huh? Ah, seems like I've been attacked. I turn my head in time to see the backs of the darkened figures as they scram out the front of the bar. I check the register sitting there on the counter, completely cleaned out aside from a few coins. Tough break. Yeah, right. I rush out of the bar in pursuit, but the balaclava boys are nowhere to be seen. What to do? Should I look around more? Nah, I should call the police. Wait, before that, I need to tell Beardy. You alright? A strange old guy in a beaten up suit calls out to me pretty far from all right but i'm not about to tell him that your nose it's leaking what then i realize the sensation of cold blood beneath my nostrils and alongside the realization of feeling in the bridge of my nose like it's about to explode you get robbed or what yeah what's your name yakko yakko for you wrong your name's adele weber what you know the rundown office building on the other side of the hotel yeah, you used to have a cram school inside. Well, actual, they're on the second floor. Go and give them that name. You'll get your money back. Uh, what are you talking about? It's true. I can see the future. It's not like I believe anybody can actually see the future, but when some middle-aged guy says something that cryptic that disappears, holds a certain persuasive power over you. And to be honest, it would have been a hassle getting to the police or Beardy involved. It's not like I'd get the money back. More importantly, Beardy can be a total pill. So I went to the building to see for myself. Lights only seeping out of the window on the second floor. The old man was right. Seriously? Of course, that isn't proof the balaclavas from before are actually inside. But I'm hoping they are. I'm hoping, I'm hoping what the man said about getting the money back is true. That what he said about being able to see the future is true. I wouldn't complain about a little excitement in this boring life of mine from time to time. Half filled with prayer and half filled with excitement, I slowly climb the pitch black stairwell to the building. Upon reaching the second floor, I find myself in front of a dented aluminum door. Light trickles through a pane of frosted glass at an eye level. Those guys really are in this building. I'm in the right place. So what now? Am I supposed to kick down the door and tell them I'm Adele Weber, like the old guy told me to? Ridiculous. Even if this is their hideout, it's not like they'll be uh, they'll believe me just because I say that name. And I doubt they're going to stop at a nosebleed this time. I should ju I should bit my tongue. I should definitely just call the police. Is someone there? Do they hear me? Uh, maybe they saw me through the glass. Uh, the aluminum door bursts open like someone kicked it from the other side. Who the hell are you? A young man who might be one of the balaclavas from earlier scowls at me. Behind him is a dusty room roughly the size of a small studio apartment. In the center of the room is a large table littered with half-eaten rice. On either side uh, of it are two shabby couches. There's stuffing popping out. Seated on one of the couches is another young man who could also be one of the balaclava boys. Hey, are you the guy from the bar? Return the money, please. Uh, nah, don't feel like it. The guy sitting on the sofa reaches one hand back without looking. A metal bat sprouts from behind him. Crap. This really isn't going to end with just a nosebleed. The words spill out of my mouth before I can even think. Uh, I'm Adele Weber. Huh? The men look at one another. I can tell they're discussing something with those glances. Adele, you don't think... Think what? What are they thinking? I don't know. I have no idea. The only thing I do know is that if I stay here any longer, things aren't going to end well for me. Please return it. Now. The men confer again with their eyes. Silence. I notice flecks of dust swirl before me. We're sorry. The guy's holding the metal bat bows his head with fervor. Before I can blink, his partner up closes the... His partner up closes... I'm sorry, the sentence isn't clicking with me here. Before I can blink, his partner up close does... Oh my god. Because I'm reading that as close, not close. 
Okay, one more time. Sorry. I swear to God I can read. Before I can blink, his partner up close does the same. Like, I was thinking he was close to the door, so he's going to close the door. Eh. Blood, like, uh, blood likely frozen by the tension resumes flowing through me. The edges of my vision flicker white. Del Weber. Who the hell is he? Has to be someone whose face those guys don't recognize. Someone they can't refuse. No explanation comes to mind. Maybe they're flunkies in some gang and Adele Weber is the name of their boss. Maybe he's so secretive even the other members don't know his face. Or maybe I've seen way too many B-movies and when I ask who the hell he is, I also mean the man in the suit. He claimed he could see the future, but was he being serious? Granted, he was right about the Adele Weber thing, and I did get the money back, but that doesn't prove he's clairvoyant. Hold on, what if the old man is actually Adele Weber? I mean, he could be, right? And so in conclusion, just who the hell is this Adele Weber guy? Well, anyway, I'd recover the stolen money. Either because of the adrenaline either because the adrenaline had worn off, or because I just crossed an incredibly dangerous bridge, I found myself covered in goosebumps. If you had told me my skull was crushed by that metal bat and I was just a stain on the wall, I might have believed you. So in that state, I made my way back to the bar. You're back early. The old guy in the suit sitting at the counter says to me, somewhat casually, What are you doing here? Nothing really. I just thought you'd want a proper farewell is all. I appreciate it, but I have no idea what's going on. Before we get into that, how'd it go? You got the money back? Yeah, thanks to you, but what's this all about? Can you really see the future? And what's the deal with Adele Weber? And... All right, I'm a master detective. Huh? Know what I'm talking about? Master detectives? I mean, I've heard things, but... Master detectives, sleuths with extraordinary abilities belonging to an extra-legal, extra-privileged organization devoted to eradicating the world's unsolved mysteries. The World Detective Organization... Uh, telekinesis, clairvoyance, mind reading, the ultimate detectives, heroes. No kidding, you're pretty well informed. When I was a kid, I mean, I'm still a kid, but I used to want to be a detective. Ah, that means your uh, forensic forte is being able to see the future, right? Yeah, my forte is called foresight. When I touch someone, I can see the next hour of their life. Well, I see, but it's more like an instant imprint onto my mind. Hold on a second. If you have to touch someone physically for your power to work, does that mean you touched the robbers earlier? They bumped right into me when they left the bar. They were causing a ruckus, so I looked into their futures. Saw their hideout was on the other side of the hotel. Their boss's last name was Weber. And that and that he had a little brother named Adele. They didn't seem to know the brother, so I gave you the name. You see, the boss's little brother. That does explain what happened earlier, but... I'm parched. How about pouring me a beer? Sure, no problem, but... But what? If you got something to say, say it. I'm just wondering if it's all... True. Hmm? You did help me out earlier, but... That doesn't mean you could have known about the robbery before then. You might even be the boss or his brother Adele Weber, as cliche as it sounds. And to be frank, it's hard to imagine a real master detective would just be sitting in front of me. Huh. <laughs> You did mention something about wanting to be a detective. Pain in my ass. Sorry. First of all, the name's Mitsume. Mitsume Haring, not Adele Weber. Second, if you want proof and can see the future, Mitsume places the, hand, the palm of his hand on his forehead as if he were checking for a fever. There we go. You see that woman in the dress through the glass door, yeah? Yeah? A woman in a black dress walks toward us from an alley. And there's a man in a hoodie by the pole in front of her. Yeah? Yeah? The woman is going to walk past the man in the hoodie. After three seconds, she'll drop something like a handkerchief or a scarf. The man will step forward to pick it up just as she realizes she dropped it and turns around. A chance encounter. They'll recognize each other, decide to grab drinks, and walk away. He lays it all out in detail. The woman walks past the man in the hood. One, two... Oh! She drops her scarf. Needless to say, the rest plays out just like Mitsumi had pre Mitsume, sorry, had predicted. I saw my own future. The future we're witnessing now. Rad. Here's the deal. Or he's the real deal. To think that someone as terrifying as a master detective is here in Kanai Ward. What's he doing in a place like this? Is he working a case? What kind of case has to... Uh, what kind of cases has he solved before? 
uh, the questions bubble up like a freshly opened bottle of tonic water. But first, I, I, I have to thank you properly. Don't worry about it. I just felt like helping. If you must, not about bringing me that beer. But I'd feel bad if I couldn't do something to pay you back. That's a lie. Of course, I want to thank him, but there's more to it. I don't want this meeting to end. I want to get into his good graces. Oh, yeah? He thinks for a second. Then how about working part-time at my detective agency? Huh? It'd suit you better than this place. And so he started working at Mitsume's detective agency, the Kanai Ward branch of the World Detective Organization. I quit my job at the bar without a second thought. It occurred to me again that the reason I kept mixing drinks was because I was worried about not having anything to do. I was so excited to start my new extraordinary life working under a master detective. But it wasn't what I expected. The only cases assigned to me involved finding lost cats and investigating cheating spouses. Dumbass, how are you going to help out with requests from the WDO? Those are top secret. You get the run of the mill stuff I don't need to be bothered with. The easy jobs. Makes sense? Makes sense. Okay, so far this is sounding a lot like a uh, process of elimination. It's, it's sounding like a like a similar setup. Like there's this this over um, this governing body of these uh, semi-autonomous detectives out in the world, um, and our character is kind of being swept up into this world. And yes, I am going to be playing uh, process. I'm going to keep playing process of elimination. I've just been busy with other stuff, but that's beside the point. <clears throat> a silly dream shattered in an instant. By the way, the office was as typical as typical gets. Just a normal room in a regular office building. I'd imagine fantasized about hidden doors behind bookshelves, which would subsequently lead to rooms filled with cutting-edge tech. You can imagine my disappointment when I first saw a branch office of the world-renowned WDO. How dense are you? Only the... Only the diffident would get hung up on that kind of crap. I don't know the word diffident. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest. Yeah, I get it, but it's natural for a teenage boy to have that sort of expectation, right? That said, since I'd started working at, the Mitsu at Mitsumi's agency, my day-to-day -day, uh, life blossomed. Partly because I'd wanted to be a detective ever since I was a kid, and partly because even seemingly straightforward jobs required some degree of creativity. Take a lost cat, for example. I'd have to consider its personality, lifestyle, the surrounding geography, and so on if I wanted to guess where it might be. If I found it, I'd feel like I'd just beaten a game. If I didn't, it'd become a trial and error. There was something to learn in that repetition. Adultery cases were usually depressing, but... Staking out a hotel made me feel like I was doing real detective work. And although it wasn't like me, even I'd get swept up in the emotion of it when a client tearfully said something like, Now I can start my life over again. But when I reported to Mitsume about these experiences, I'd be met with a cold expression. You're a real detective once those emotions end. Once it becomes routine and no longer affects you. Then why are you a detective? What's your motivation now? I don't need a motivation. A pro just gets the job done. For real? I mean, I had already figured this emotional high wouldn't last forever, but Mitsume's words hit me harder than anything. Beardy hit a... Uh, hit, okay, okay, I'm sorry, I was reading a comma into that sentence. Mitsume's words hit me harder than anything Beardy had ever said. I learned I was the shallow type of person who puts title and position above, in, uh, above all else. Because truthfully, you've got a knack for this kid. Nothing made me happier than when Mitsume praised me. Me? Having a knack for anything? I couldn't help but chuckle to myself. Driven by that high, I felt nothing but respect for him at first. But master detectives are human too. And when it came to women, Mitsume was particularly human. More than once, I'd arrive at the office to find a strange woman sleeping on the couch. During one such occasion, another woman showed up at the same time. The two women inevitably met, and Mitsume ran off after telling them to, or telling me to take care of it. In the end, both women waited in the office all day, and after listening, after listening to Mitsume make his sweet, laden excuses upon his return, slapped him in the face. It was the first time I'd seen an adult grovel on his knees. I also sometimes wondered if there was some hidden meaning to the assignments Mitsume threw my way. Like the time I had to sit in a specific seat in a cafe for a whole day. Literally, just sit. 
Or when I endlessly tailed some guy without knowing a single thing about him. A chubby guy in red sweats. I followed him the entire day and didn't see anything suspicious. But they were Mitsume's orders, which meant there had to be some intention behind them. And thus, I tackled them with all diligence. I also scrubbed the bathroom in the office until it shined. Inevitably, I started to realize that detective work was what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. But anybody can dream. The hard part's keeping that dream alive. It's been two months since I started working at Mitsume's detective agency. I'm in the red light district hunting for a lost cat. The lights around me dim as I turn into an alley. In that moment, a large black car stops on the side of the road. Sitting in the driver's seat and riding shotgun are the balaclava boys from before. This time, they're bare-faced and wearing ill-fitting suits. I hide behind a telephone pole as soon as I recognize them. Up to no good again, I guess. Or maybe they just finished. As I observe them, I notice Mitsume in the back seat. He's laughing with the man beside him. The man has tattoos in a circular pattern beneath both eyes. Teardrops. Lots of them. It's customary for gangbangers to get a teardrop tattoo for each person they kill, right? In that case, how many lives, have, how many lives has this guy taken? Wait, hold on. Could the tattooed man be Adele Weber's older brother? The boss of the Balaclava Boys, but... That would mean that one of them is the driver, but why is Mitsume joking around with a gang boss? Is Mitsume actually the boss's younger brother? No, the tattooed man looks younger. If anything, he'd be Mitsume's younger brother. But that would make Mitsume the boss. Maybe they're just friends? Business partners? Now, whatever the case, I'd been duped. But in what way? To what end? I continue on watching as whatever strength holding me up uh, drains from my legs. How long has it been now? Ten minutes? After they wrap up their friendly chat, Mitsume hands the tattooed man an envelope. He checks the contents. A fat stack of cash. His fingers flicker as he counts it. He grins with an expression that says, All here. Mitsume exits the car with the balaclava boys. Turning to face them, he lowers his head in a bow of thanks. What? Then disappears into the red light district. My legs finally give out. Behind closed eyelids, a white haze whirls. The hell? What's going on? Mitsume gave them money, so he must be involved in something shady, right? But he's a master detective of the World Detective Organization. Wait, what if he's been lying about being a master detective? No, he definitely saw the future. Even if he knew the location of the Balaclava Boys' hideout because he was in bed with them, that wouldn't mean, uh, that wouldn't explain how he knew what would happen outside the bar. Unless that was also some kind of trick. Yako? I turned my head up toward the voice. Um, who is this again? A woman in her mid-twenties. Uh, did you already forget? We met at the detective agency, remember? I ran into that other woman. Hmm, I'm Ahab. But you can call me Eha. The name doesn't ring a bell, but she's definitely one of Mitsumi's playmates. What's wrong? You look terrible. Well, that's... Never mind, I'm just dealing with some personal issues. Does it have something to do with Mitzi? What makes you think that? All he does is make people play uh, play around him cry, including me and other women, of course. He's not a bad guy, though. Oh, but I guess that's something people usually say about bad guys. Did you know he can see the future? Huh? The future? Like ESP? Yeah, he claims that if he touches someone, he can see the next hour of their life. <laughs> oh, you're joking. Mitsumi usually kept quiet about being a master detective, so it's not surprising that Ahab doesn't know. But it makes sense if you think about it, right? If Mitsumi can see the future, it'd explain everything. You want to believe him, don't you? I guess so. But it's not true. He can see the future. If he could, he wouldn't be so terrible with women, and I wouldn't have bumped into that other woman. Well, you see, there are special conditions for his power to work, and he would have to touch me, right? And that's the condition? He certainly did that. And then some. Sexy. Not, no, uh, the extent of my knowledge about that kind of thing is limited to what I've seen in books and videos. Nothing more. <clears throat> but if she says that's what happened, then that's what happened. The conditions must have been met. Maybe he has a personal policy to not use his foresight in private matters. Or maybe it goes against his principles? But that's a lot to assume of him. Hypothetically speaking, what if Mitsume is a fraud? He wouldn't be able to see the future, but if that were true, he wouldn't have been able to predict uh, what we saw through the glass door of the bar. 
did he hire actors beforehand anticipating I doubt his abilities? No, what would be the point of doing all that just to fool me? Or maybe the scene he predicted was actually one that happened all the time and I just never noticed. Then again, he said the woman would suddenly drop her scarf. For him to know that, he had to be clairvoyant. When the deductions don't add up, investigate the scene. I parted ways with Ahab and went back to my old bar. I didn't burn any bridges when I quit, but I also didn't want to deal with Beardy. My reluctance was ultimately unwarranted, as he'd already hired a new part-timer. A cute one at that. Seems like he hadn't given my resignation a second thought. If anything, he was probably grateful I left. I order a cola, sit in the same seat Mitsume sat in when he made his prediction and looked at the glass door. No sign of the woman or the man in the hood from before. The current time is a little earlier than the time at which Mitsume had made his prediction back then. Before I entered the bar, I looked around the area where the woman had dropped her scarf, but didn't find an air vent or any other uh, contrivance that could have increased the likelihood of someone dropping something. I continue observing through the glass door, but no ideas come to mind. There's only the melting ice in my drink. Excuse me. Is the expression on my face that dour? The part-timer who had taken over my position speaks to me gingerly. It's last call. Would you like anything else? Oh, I'm not sure I'm even going to finish this. That's right. Fundamentals. After investigating the scene, the next step is to question, uh, to question witnesses. Can I ask you something? Have you ever looked through the glass door and seen a woman drop a scarf near the pole? Hmm. No, I don't think so. Figured as much. Oh, that must have been the cue, right? The cue. You don't know? The other day, a group of drug dealers were arrested. I guess they were selling on the streets around here because the owner and I were both questioned by the police. They said the dealers and customers had a secret way of communicating with each other. And it sounded like that might be what you're describing. That's it. Mitsume knew the man by the pole was a dealer. The woman approaching was a customer and what their secret cue was. The way he described it made it sound like he could see the future. But come to think of it, he was vague when he said she'd drop a handkerchief or a scarf. He knew the cue was to drop something made of cloth, but didn't know what it'd be. Then it's confirmed. Mitsume can't see the future. He lied about belonging to the World Detective Organization. He's just a local detective with ties to a criminal outfit. But I still can't figure out why he helped me after I'd been robbed. Did he want to grunt around to take care of easy jobs for him? Or did he just want to mess with the Balaclava boys? There are plenty of explanations, and they all fit. Still, I don't want to believe it. I want to believe Mitsume. I want to believe he's a real master detective who can see the future. That he's working towards some goal I can't even imagine. That all my suspicions will be flipped around in one triumphant final move, like a game of, uh, like in a game of checkers, something like that. I can't help but believe in that sort of future. He must have come straight back from the red light district. Mitsume was lying on the couch, puffing a cigarette with a newspaper in hand. Hmm? What's up? What's with the scary looking face? I... I told him everything. That I saw him hand the money to the tattooed man in the black car. That I figured out the foresight trick he had pulled at the bar. Oh, that. Despite the weight of my accusations, Mitsume's expression didn't change. Smoke seeps from his mouth as he exhales, a nerve wracking two or three seconds. I lose the battle of wills and begin blurting out words. But why? Did someone force your hand? Or There's some kind of hidden agenda, right? Nah. He puts out the cigarette. Unbothered, uh, unbothered expression on his face. He continues. You're right about everything. I can't see the future. And I'm not a master detective with the WDO. I'm just another private eye born and raised in Kanai Ward. I cover up the tattooed guy's crimes, and in return, his boys tread some morally great territory to help me with my work. I lied to you about seeing the future because I wouldn't have some fun with those goons, and because I thought the place could use a maid. Well, he lights up another smoke, like it's an afterthought. Valuable lesson, don't you think? That's what being a detective is about. What now? Quit crying. Don't you were a man. You want to talk. I take it you're quitting. Do you even need to ask? Alright guys, I'm going to step away for a quick second. I need to get a bottle of water or something if I'm going to keep going with this. Alright, about halfway through this. 
I was hoping that there'd be like images or something. It wouldn't just be a wall of text. And I also don't get why this is a totally different um, application than the actual game. It's very odd to me, but whatever. It didn't hurt too much. When I think about what happened at Mitsumi's detective agency, it feels like a story someone else told me. Like it isn't real because I didn't personally experience it. And so it doesn't affect me. Even factoring in all the deception, I can shrug it off because it's not my problem. Maybe the shock of finding out what, uh, I'd been duped triggered a subconscious defense mechanism that's protecting me from dealing with the pain directly. Well, so be it. I have no desire to face it head on. Thus ends the Yakko Furio, uh, Furio part-timer at a detective agency chapter of my life. Truth be told, I still wanted to know if the jobs Mitsumi sent me on, like finding cats, investigating cheating spouses, as well as the ones I couldn't explain, sitting in a cafe all day long, or following someone around unnoticed. Oh, shit. Uh, actually had a hidden meeting. Was it some sort of fundamental detective training? Maybe it was just an excuse to get me out of the office so he could bring women back. Anything seemed possible. Well, whatever. Who cares? Someone so easily fooled isn't cut out for detective work anyway. It's alright. What I should have been thinking about was what to do with my free time. I quit the bar, quit the agency, and was back at square one. I finally have to decide what to do with my life, but I don't want to think about it yet. I tried looking for new part-time work, but the idea of tutoring at a cram school or working in food service feels off. So I've been going to arcades instead. Sometimes I challenge nerds and delinquents in fighting games. Sometimes I kill time with puzzle games. I'm burning through the money I'd saved up from working. I'm intentionally cutting off my escape routes. No, I don't plan on making the arcade my home. That said, after a month as a regular, I've gotten pretty good sometimes. I've gotten pretty good. Sometimes when I square off with someone on the other side of the cabinet who's on my level, crowd forms. All dudes, of course. Arms crossed or chins in hands, they scrutinize my matches as if they have control over the outcome. Actually, I don't hate it. When I win, their reserved applause goes beyond the wow, cool type of platitude you get from some chick. It's genuine admiration. Craving that validation, I grip the stick and hit the buttons. I block my opponent's attacks with precise timing and take it, uh, take advantage of their openings to land weak but confirmed counters. He, uh, his gradually depleting HP bar is the remaining distance to the fight line or to the finish line. It calls to me. Ah, Yakko. So this is where you've been. What? My opponent combos into a super and that lands squarely on my chin. My fighter, a capoeira, a capoeiraista, there we go, is sent flying and lands on his back. Sparse applause sounds, but not for me. My eyes narrow as I turn toward the voice. Um, is it, is this, um, Tekken? It's the only game I can think of that has a capoeiraist. I don't think Street Fighter has one. A woman with a familiar voice, uh, with a familiar face, stands before me, whose name I don't recall. Mitsume Playmate Number Two. She bumped into Ahab that one time. Kiriko Cornelius, remember me? Maybe not. It's been a while. A long time no see. Uh, I've been looking for you. I don't have your info, and Mitsume said he didn't have. Uh, he didn't know where you were either. Why? What do you need from me? Well, I have a request. A mystery I want you to solve. A mystery? You mean, like a case? Exactly, an unsolved case. In short, Kirika's story. She had a twin sister. and I'm going with Angie uh, Cornelius. An incident occurred 12 years ago when they were both in elementary school. When they were both elementary school students. Angie uh, disappeared without a trace. The police organized a search, but they couldn't find her. 12 years passed without any leads. However, Bones believed it belonged to Angie, washed up on the riverbank in Kanai, in Kanai Wars Kamasaki district, a few days ago. During the course of a forensic investigation, the bones were found to belong not to Angie, but to her sister, Kiriko Cornelius. We decided an arcade wasn't the best place for a conversation of this magnitude and relocated to a cafe. Kiriko calmly takes a drag of her cigarette. None of it makes sense. Uh, there are a few things bothering me. Of course, mask away. Are you saying the two of you were switched? If Kiriko is the one who died, that would make you the supposedly missing Angie, correct? 
Not quite. It's still under investigation, but it's a possibility. I've gone my entire life thinking I'm Kiriko Cornelius. I, it, it's so weird seeing the, the, the Eastern name and then the Western name. But maybe I'm really Angie. I might have been swapped and just never realized it. But why do you want me to solve it? I'm not Mitsume, and this is the sort of thing that you'd ask the WDO to handle. I can't tell you that. I can't tell you that yet. You can't tell me. You'll understand once you arrive at the scene, the riverbank where the bones were washed up. Why can't you just tell me now? Like I said, it'll all make sense once you're there. Oh, and don't tell Mitsume about this. I can't wrap my head around it. Why, after 12 years, are bones discovered belonging to the sister who had lived a normal life till now, rather than the sister who had disappeared? Why, of all the people, am I being asked to investigate this case? There isn't a single mystery in this world I should have to solve. Hell, the mystery itself probably doesn't want me solving it. But what if it does? What if it's a mystery only I can solve? Or rather, what if it's a mystery that wants to be solved by me specifically? A story that doesn't begin until I take on the mantle of a detective. I had already decided to pretend my dream never existed in the first place, and yet my heart raced. It sped up as the distance between me and detective closed. Alright then, I stopped my bike at the riverbank and surveyed the area. Kiriko? Angie? Said I would understand once I was here, but there are no signs of a police investigation. I have no idea where the bones had washed up. All I know is what the noise and light reflecting off the surface of the black water tells me. The river is raging. Yo, you made it. An unfamiliar voice from behind. The instant realization that I had made a critical mistake. I turn away from the black water before me as a man with tattoos. Teardrops. Lots of them. Behind him are a dozen or so barefaced young men, including the balaclava boys. Each holding matching batons. The tattooed man uh, begins to speak with a smirk, as if, as if he was putting on a performance. I've missed you, baby bro. You are Adele Weber, my younger brother, aren't you? What do you want? Why go through all this trouble to bring me out here? Don't you think you owe me an apology first? Why would I apologize for getting back stolen money? Anyone should apologize. Shut it! The tattoo man moves closer. I have to get out of here. I look both ways, but I'm trapped. Whichever direction I run, one of the goons is going to get me. Just as I make the realization, there's an iron tang in the back of my nose, and I find myself facing the sky. You quit working for Mitsume, huh? Another blow to my face. Guess that means I got no reason to hold back. Again in my face, my cheeks, uh, my cheek is kissing the pavement. The tattooed man straddles around my waist. My arms take the brunt of the damage meant for my face, and my brain latches onto one thing as it's, been, as it's being rocked. He doesn't have to hold back because I quit working for Mitsume. Confirmation that the two of them had been working together. Dirty cops and gang members don't mess with each other's people. Guess that quid pro quo type of relationship meant I had protection until now. Woo! The tattooed man gets up and kicks me once in the ribs. I reflexively curl into a ball, take another kick to the back of my head. <laughs> my consciousness leaps, or rather soars from me for a second. It returns and I wonder... Is this really happening? Just because I took back the money? Astrid. Always in the way, doing whatever pleases you. What? Always in the way? Pleases me? You know you're gonna die, right? You don't have to look... You don't have the look of someone who's accepted it yet. He says this with a reddened bloodshot glare. Uh, what? I'm a little scared. Please, wait. Ha! Ah! He delivers the strongest kit yet to my stomach, and I believe everything he says... He's gonna kill me. I'll become a tattoo under his eye, but always in the way. Doing whatever pleases me? I think there's been a misunderstanding. I'm gonna be killed because of it? I can't even draw a breath to try and explain. There were still plenty of things I wanted to do. I wanted to travel abroad and experiment with a girl and become a detective. Yeah, that's, that doesn't sound bad. Yeah, I wanted to become a detective. Huh? I wonder what's going on. When the tattoo man stopped kicking me, or am I already dead? In my current state of mind, I hear sirens. But I can't tell if they're real or imaginary. Police? Does some kind soul call them? I manage to raise my head and try to grasp the situation. First, it doesn't seem like I'm dead. Second, this feels real. Six police cars are parked along the vastness of the riverbank. 
the cops that spilled out from uh, from them are running around shouting and threatening the goons. The goons, including the tattooed man, look bewildered. Damn it. The tattooed man takes off at full speed. Freeze creep and officer gives chase. Not happening. One of the tattooed men's henchmen tackles the officer and the two crash into the ground. That triggers an all-out war. The hell? I don't know what's going on, but it seems I'm saved. Yo, long time no see, Yako. Huh? I follow the source of the voice as he enters my field of vision. Of course. You knows. It's Lakin. Meet Sume. It's not just my nose, is it? Nope. <laughs> you look terrible. What the hell is going on? I'll explain everything. But first, what's with that intense stare? Mitsume lowers his head to peer into my eyes. My bad for being late. What? We were planning to arrive sooner, but got a bit tied up. Uh, please, stop bowing. And what do you mean? What are you apologizing for? Mitsume raises his head and fiddles with his lighter, trying to light his cigarette. Simply put, it's just a job. A job? Truth is, all that stuff about me being a master detective who can see the future isn't true. I really am just a local private eye. Yeah, but... He sits down on the spot, finally successful in lighting up his smoke. He gets comfortable and goes on. Just like you said, I partnered up with the tattoo face in his runs. But I also had ties with the police. Detectives are basically mercenaries, you know? So, that kind of thing happens. This is where it gets complicated. About a week before I bumped into you, the police asked me to work with them in bringing down the gang. They were starting to get a little out of hand, so the police offered me a pretty sweet deal. Naturally, I accepted. Coincidentally, I ran into you, the person they just robbed. I figured I could use you, so I set you out as bait to lure them into blatantly committing a crime. Then the police take care of the rest. Blatantly? You know they were about to kill you, right? At the very least, Big Brother Weber is gonna get slapped with an attempted murder charge. So you were planning this from the day we met. That's the gist of it. Okay, but you don't actually have foresight or whatever, so... You remember all those meaningless jobs I sent you on? Sitting in a specific seat in a cafe all day, endlessly tailing someone you didn't know a thing about. It was all to disrupt their drug deals. The cafe you sat in uh, was where the transactions went down. The person you followed around with no subtlety was a dealer. The gang let you be, uh, the gang let you be since you were with me but their hatred built up all the same. They were really ready to snuff you out the second you left my protection. By the way, when you saw me hand, handing the money over to the big brother Weber, that was me making up for your actions. It was an apology for how you were interfering with their business, going about it as you pleased. As I pleased? Right. I told them you were acting alone out of your own weird sense of justice. I see. I'd been in the way, doing as I pleased, completely without my knowledge. One last thing. If the plan was to book them, why not strike while they're in the middle of a deal? Sounds like a good idea, but wouldn't have worked. Big Brother Weber, old tattoo face, rarely gets his hands dirty. And even if we hit the sites where the deals go down, we'd only catch the small fry. That wouldn't have fixed anything. That's why we had to use you as bait. Whether it's to maintain discipline in the ranks, or to keep the underlings afraid, only the boss decided when it was time to kill someone. So I made him want to murder you. Well, sorry about that. School hard knocks, right? First and foremost, are you kidding? You were about to kill me. That kind of apology isn't worth shit. I could have actually died. Fuck off. But at the same time, rat. Whatever little of my brain that's still functional can figure this uh, figure out this much. This is just a regular detective. Imagine how impressive master detectives belong to the WDO must be. Whatever anger and dejection I feel over being used as a pawn is supplanted by envy for detectives. That said, I force my aching body up and shove Mitsume by the shoulder. Ugh. Mitsume, the man who cannot see the future, falls into the evening river. <laughs> the hell was that? Simply put, it's just payback. It was dangerous. I actually came close to respecting that fraud. Thanks to Mitsume, the gang uh, has been dismantled. With that, Kanai Ward became just a little more peaceful. It doesn't feel that way, but it must be right. As for me, I returned to my part-time job at Mitsume's agency. Lost cats and cheating spouses. 
plus occasionally assisting Mutsume when he'd get a request. Stuff that felt like real detective work. No more concerns about my future path anymore. I tossed those aside. I decided I'd train here a bit longer and become a detective. It was embarrassing to admit, so I still hadn't told Mitsume. Two months passed after my return to the office, and just like that, my life as I know it comes to an abrupt end. The detective agency is finished? What, what, what did you do? What's that supposed to mean? I'm getting married. What? Say, Ahab, you met her, didn't you? Uh, c congratulations? We're moving to our hometown. Not sure if I'll set up a new office there, but I'm finished here. An unexpected ending, but a happy one. Happy. Happy. A happy ending. As if! Yeah, from what Ahab said, it didn't seem like she thought much of Mitsume. But I guess people just say things sometimes. I still don't understand a woman's heart. What about you? Have you decided what you're going to do with your life? I was thinking of becoming a detective. It's something I've wanted since I was a kid, and it looks like it could be fun from what I've seen. <laughs> Not a bad idea. You're just saying that. I'm serious. It makes me kind of happy. Feels like my time as a detective in this town has some meaning. Huh. I see. That's one way to look at it. My desire to become a detective gives meaning to Mitsume's efforts here as a detective. Well, ultimately, it's my dream. Something I'm doing for my own sake. I want to become the type of detective who makes people happy to have me around. Afterward, Yoichiro uh, Koizumi. I hope you enjoyed How to Be a Master Detective, a Yako Furio case. This novel is about an event that took place more than a decade before the main game, but you can read it before or after playing. Oh, thanks for telling me that. When I heard prequel, I thought, Ooh, maybe we should read this. Uh, when did you read it? Before or after? If you're going to start playing soon, I hope you look forward to seeing what Yako becomes. Uh, if you've already played, try imagining how Yako Yako's... I'm, I'm going with that until I hear it pronounced. Uh, would his future change or not? My yada, yada, yada. Uh, what do you think of... Okay. Brand new feelings. New. Okay. 100%. Again, it's a little weird that that was the, uh... That was just the prequel. <laughs> it, it, just, it was an interesting way to get introduced to our character. Like I said, I kind of wish it was animated, done more like a visual novel. But... Eh, it's a, it's a good place to start. Uh, next video, guys, we will actually be hopping into Master Detective Archive's Rain Code proper. Hope you stay tuned for it. Hope you're excited. Thank you for watching, as always. Social media in the description. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I will see you all in the next one. But until then, I'm out.